Hello and welcome to the 61st video in this series programming a chess engine in GUI and JavaScript. So now we have, we're in the situation where we can actually move a piece on the board. We're now near, very nearly ready to actually play a game versus the GUI. And I think in two videos time we might actually be at that stage. So in this video what I want to implement is a critical part of the code is and that's each time a move has been completed we need to check then the game state. Has mate been delivered? Is the game a draw? A stalemate? Etc. The things we need to check for are, we need to check for whether the material situation on the board is a draw and this material situation isn't a theoretical draw so say uh, one side has two knights and a king and the other side a king now in this situation so long as the side of the lone king is careful they shouldn't get mated but it isn't actually a um, declared draw because with bad play the side, uh, the side of the lone king can get mated so we need a function that checks for pure drawn material situations on the board at which point we can declare end of game and it's a draw threefold repetition and obviously exceeding the 50 move rule and then the last thing we'll do is generate all moves in the position check if there is a legal move available and if there isn't have a look whether the game is over due to mate or stalemate so fairly simple stuff and there's going to be a bit of copy and paste in this one because I want to get the code complete within a reasonable time so and there's nothing really very difficult so the first thing is is we're going to return a bool dot true if we're in a position where the material situation is such that neither side can win so the way we do this is just to ask a few questions and again this isn't done for max efficiency it's done for much max clarity first thing is is if we have pawns on the board then we can't have a draw situation because one of them could promote and we're now going to see a line like this repeated about six times for the various pieces so the next thing is to ask is do we have any queens or rooks on the board if we do then the situation is not I'll just put that on a new line the situation can't be a draw because we are we can obviously mate with a queen and rook and the same thing applies then to if either side has two or more knights or bishops because remember if we've got this far down now here then we don't have any pawns or queens or rooks on the board so the next thing we'll say is okay do we have does either side have more than two knights or bishops if they do then they can deliver mate if the other side is not careful so the next thing to ask is okay well there are no pawns no queens neither side has two or more knights or bishops so let's ask if each side has a knight and a bishop if it does then obviously mate again can be delivered Otherwise, we're in the situation where, at best, each side only has one of each minor piece, and in which case, mate can't be delivered, and the, we can return the situation as a draw. The game is effectively over. The next thing we want to do is we want to write a function to check for threefold repetition, and this is something very similar to what you've already seen. Because we check after each move has been made then after each move has been made we simply check the hash keys for all the previous moves and see if um, they equal our current hash key and then we'll increment r and obviously if r is then 3 at the end we have a threefold repetition so we can simply say that i equals naught and i is less than our game board dot oh we see and we've seen this a few times before obviously our history array in fact, no, it's not the array, it's our hisply here for the loop. Plus plus i. And then we'll simply say in here, and actually I'm going to copy the code in because there's really no point in typing it, it's stuff we've seen before. So we simply say if the key matches up to the current key, we'll increment r, and then at the end of the function, we'll return r. So that's our threefold repetition. Uh, just put an r ep on the end there and our draw material so now we can start writing our check result function so this will be called the end of each move well it'll be called from another function at the end of each move which you'll see shortly so check result so this will return either a true or a false depending on the situation of the game so if the game is over it will return a, tr return a true so I'm going to drop these things, well I'll write the first one out and then I'll do a bit of uh, copy and paste. So, so we're going to say that if our game board dot 50, uh, what was it called, 50 move is greater than or equal to 100, then the game is over. So what we can do is, you remember inside index.html, 
we have somewhere down the bottom here a span for game status. So what we can do now is we can actually take this game status and we'll set the text then to the result. So we'll set it to game drawn due to the 50 move rule and then we'll return bool.true. Now we can do exactly the same thing then for our three rolled rep and also for our draw material. So I'll just paste these two in. If threefold rep is greater than or equal to two, because remember R started at zero, sorry, returning three was incorrect earlier, it starts at zero. So if it's greater than or equal to two, then we have a drawn game due to threefold repetition. And if draw material is equal to bull.true, then insufficient material on the board to mate, we also then have a drawn position. I'll just tab these over so it's a bit neat. So that then covers the situation where we might have a draw due to our 50 move rule or something like this. Now what we can do is look for mate and stalemate, which means obviously we need to generate all of our moves for the position. And I'm whizzing through this a bit because this you'll know what's coming now. It's the good old move loop and having a look whether we actually find a legal move or not. And we've seen this so many times in the code in the previous videos. I'm just going to drop it in in this way. And we're saying we loop through our moves as usual. We increment found. If we found a move, then we take that move back and break. We don't need to carry on looping. We already know that the position here isn't mate. But what we'll do is now, obviously, is at the, the end of here, We'll say that if found is not equal to zero, then we can already return bool dot false. It isn't end of game because we found a legal move. Otherwise, however, we're in a situation where there's no legal move for the opponent. So what we need to do there is we need to, like we did in our search, we need to ask if we're in check. So is the king for the current side attacked from the opposing side? And if it is, then we'll have to return the relevant string for who's uh, mated or set the relevant string. So we'll say that if in check equals bool.true, then the game is a mate else, and we can already set the game status in here as a stalemate. And inside here, we simply need to find out now which side has actually been mated. So obviously, if it's white to move now, then white has been mated. Otherwise, like this, um, black has been mated. So we simply say, if it's white to move, then set the game status as game over black as mates. Otherwise, we'll set the status as game over white mates. And the last thing I'm going to do at the bottom, but we should never ever reach here, is return bool.false. So that now is our checked result function, which is now written to check whether the game is over. And the last function I want to write here now is a function called check and set. And this is the function that will be called after each move is made. And the reason I've separated it out slightly is because we're simply going to say inside check and set, if check result equals bool.true, then the game is over. So what we can do is, is we can say that our game controller dot game over equals bool.true. And then otherwise, what we'll do is we'll set our game controller game over obviously to be bool.false. And what we'll also do is we will remove the game status text. So we'll just set the game status text effectively to empty. Like so. And we don't need to return anything from this function. So that's all there is to it. Now what we need to do is, for now, we need to take this check and set function and we need to drop this into the place where we've just moved our GUI piece so we can check the state of the game and what we can also do is we'll put this check and set actually where we call and set a new game up as well like this so that if we get an FEN given in by someone which is already a mate then the 
uh, computer isn't actually going to start searching the position or something like that. So now all of that's done, hopefully I haven't made too many enormous typos inside here. I'm going to go back to the console and just refresh and wince. And I'm going to, from win at chess.epd, just take a, a mate position here and set the position up on the board and I'm just going to pay, play out the mate sequence here so it's not found after the first move calling check and set any problems here um, hopefully I'm in the right uh, address here, yes I am so let's play pawn takes queen and now it should tell us that we have a mate and you can see down the bottom right here it's saying game over white mates if I set the position back again that then disappears. Good, so that seems then to be working okay. So finally then in the next video we can start looking at actually getting the engine to search in response to our move. So thanks very much for watching, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.